John, thanks for joining me today. Uh, a lot of discussion here about uh, cybersecurity solutions for artificial intelligence. What's the intersection of those two really important topics in your mind? I, th I think you, you've got so many different directions you can go just on that one topic of cybersecurity. Let's look first at just the classic idea of cybersecurity and protecting systems. Forget about AI for a second. Um, if you go back to 2016, uh, a real interesting thing happened. DARPA sponsored the uh, Cyber Grand Challenge that was held at DEF CON in the summer. Long, long process leading up to it, but they essentially had machines sitting on stage attacking each other um, and trying to defend each, each other from, or defend themselves from the other machines at the same time. It wasn't necessarily built as AI, but there was a bit of that going on in, in that whole thing. That was fascinating to see kind of what what was the state of the art, and this is you know 2016, so it's a it's a ways it's a ways back at this point. I think with with AI and especially with things like generative AI, we talk a lot about ethical concerns in 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 this country at least in in the in the Western world. Um, the adversaries that have access to this as well are not going to be thinking that way. They're gonna they're they're gonna unleash these things and essentially turn them into attack tools. And so it's, it's incumbent on us to also be developing defensive capabilities within AI to where systems can automatically de defend themselves from that because the speed is going to be just mind-blowing in, in terms of how adaptive that can be. Real simple example, phishing attacks. Um, they're already the, the number one way that people get access to credentials. And so if you, if you suddenly AI enable those things, um, to, to sort of create custom spear phishing attacks at each individual person, customized for that person, uh, the read rate's going to go way up. And so that's, that's a concern for us. So that's one aspect of AI in, in just sort of attacker, defender um, sort of scenarios. On the defensive side of cybersecurity, think about what a security analyst does today in investigating an incident. They're going to spend huge amounts of time just gathering data and trying to put together all the pieces so that they can get a coherent timeline of sort of what took place. And so if you think about, I got to go into the right systems, I got to pull the right data, I got to normalize the timestamps on these, on these various things, AI can do a lot of that for us, right? And, and so it's not taking the place of the human analyst, but it's basically pulling together all the information that analyst needs to be able to make an intelligent decision. And so that's really powerful. That's, that's, we are already suffering from too few of those types of analysts. Mm -hmm. And by being able to AI power some of the, the kind of mundane work that they have to do today, it frees them up for, for so much more interesting and, and, and um, impactful things. Finally, I think there's, there's a whole aspect of security of the AI itself that we need to consider. Um, nation states stealing pre-trained AI models and trying to figure out, you know, how can we use it? So we don't have to spend the money to, to train our own models. We'll come in and just take someone else's and, and, and go forth and use that. There's a, there's a concept called adversarial AI. And, and the idea there is, can I poison the AI model? Can I somehow defeat it? And, and this gets into things like machine learning where we've got massive data sets. And I've got to, I'm going to try to essentially influence the outcome of the machine learning model by poisoning the input data. Really hard to, to, to detect. And so you've seen the number of data breaches that we have out there all the time. What if what's coming out of that environment is not the problem, but what's going into that environment? Very few people are looking for that sort of thing. And so you might have an accidentally exposed very large data set with an adversary trying to inject data into that as a way of influencing the final product. That's a bit scary uh, because ultimately, and, and it's been talked about at this conference, we can't necessarily audit these things all that well. We can't go and look at source code and say, well, this is how this AI thing functions. It's a bunch of ones and zeros that we don't really know where those things came from or necessarily what they do. And so it becomes really difficult to figure out, do we trust the model that we've, that we've actually trained? John, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you.